You better go. Okay, we're going. Hold on tight. Full beams Oh gosh, ahead. oh gosh. Everybody just hold on tight. We're full sending this thing. Hard brakes. And, and there goes everything. What's going on back there? Well, hello, good afternoon, and welcome to another Kyle Connor YouTube channel video. You join me for my last drive in the BMW iX. I've had it for over two weeks and over 3,000 miles. That's a lot for a test car. Most test cars are like 500 miles and they're like, call us if you go farther. And of course I emailed BMW. I was like, hey, you guys know we're gonna do all the stuff. And they're like, well, just do whatever you want with it. Pile the miles on, take it on a road trip. And I was like, all right, well, so we did. Um, <laughs> basically the car has to go back to BMW. If you guys aren't totally familiar with how the press car situation work, works, um, a lot of manufacturers choose one company to house all the press cars and have them delivered and things like this. So it's going back to my friends at Automotive Media Solutions in Denver, and they have a fleet of cars from different manufacturers, like the new Range Rover that we have is from them. I'm picking up a new Sprinter to compare to our Winnebago Revel. They just have a bunch of cars and, and keep us going, but we coordinate those either with them, but ultimately through the automakers to set up everything. And so we typically work with BMW. We're like, hey, can you send us an iX? It goes to them and then it comes up to us is how that works. Anyway, doesn't matter. Um, yeah, so my last drive in the iX, 3000 miles. It's been pretty freaking wild. And now it's time to head down to Denver to return it. Oh, I'm gonna miss this thing a bit. I haven't really fallen in love with it, but I do appreciate it. And I think it's built really well. And I think it's one of the best electric cars on the market truly today. From th little things like this, it's basically driving itself in Assist Plus. It's hands-free eye tracking. So as long as I look forwards, the car is doing everything in traffic below, I think 45 miles an hour. And uh, just a truly wonderful highway cruiser, big range, good efficiency all around, a just wonderful cruiser. But there are things I don't like about it. And I've made a video for out of spec reviews that will go up later, basically saying everything I like and dislike after spending so much time with it. But uh, ultimately what we're doing is we have about an hour to go to get down to see my friend Dave and the team at AMS. I'm picking up, I think, a green 2500 4x4 Sprinter I wanted to compare my Winnebago Revel to that. I don't know, I thought it'd be kind of fun. Plus I have to move some wheels around because we're gonna pick up the Sprinter, then we're going to Drew's shop at Martian Wheels to pick up the wheels for my Plaid because two of those were damaged in the crash. I'm then gonna bring those back up here to Colton who is our detailer for Out of Spec Detailing, new channel if you haven't checked it out. We launched it yesterday, Out of Spec Detailing. We're gonna have those wheels coated and then I have to go to UPS because I missed the delivery for my new iPhone. You can see, sorry, we missed you. And yep, got to pick up my iPhone. So we got a lot of shuffling around errands to do basically. So to many of you, the life of YouTube may look really glamorous, but really all I do is sit in traffic running from place to place all day, every day. And I have to constantly do this Fort Collins to Denver run. It's 56 miles one way um, and it's totally fine, but I-25 sucks. This is one of the worst roads in the country. The whole thing's under construction, which means you get dirt and rocks all over the road. Your cars get destroyed. I've cracked so many windshields on this road. It's not even funny. It's just it's terrible. You get free flowing traffic and then everyone comes to a screeching halt and then you get pile up accidents. It's so scary. We've been in an accident in a Jeep Grand Wagoneer on this road where someone turned into us, ripped the wheel off the car and then ran away. Ripped the wheel off our car. They obviously had four wheels because they drove away, idiot. <laughs> it just sucks. <laughs> this sucks. But of course, I, I wouldn't want to do anything else for my job. It's really wonderful to be able to make content for you guys. Um, yeah, we're at 80% state of charge. I always try to return EVs with quite a bit of battery in them because uh, very important that we, you know, don't, don't screw the people who are returning EVs. I know a lot of journalists treat cars like crap and they return the cars with two or 3% state of charge and they expect them full. And it's just like, don't do that. And honestly, you shouldn't even loan cars to journalists who don't have home charging, or at least don't understand how public infrastructure works. That's a big key element, I think. Anyway, all right, we got one hour to go, sitting in traffic, crank up the tunes, see you when we get there. This always amazes me that people won't spend the like 
a dollar twenty five to drive in the HOV lane. It'd be like I don't know forty bucks a month, and you could just avoid traffic. And it's always like this the entire way into Denver. I don't know. And now our time is up with the iXM60. We had a blast with this thing. Over three thousand miles of adventure. Again, keep an eye on the Out of Spec Reviews channel. Just earlier today, I did a comparison of this versus the Tesla Model X versus the Audi e-tron. To boil it down, so you don't have to watch that video. My recommendation is to go for the iX but the 50 not the m60 if you do a lot of long trips if you're sticking around town i still think the e-tron is the more comfortable choice but overall really enjoyed the ix this is the only thing i don't love about it was that front view but really it's kind of grown on me and i think going for the car in a darker color helps quite a bit i would definitely spec it with these wheels but here's what's coming up next. I told you guys I was coming here to pick up something kind of interesting, and it's this. You guys know I'm a huge van fan, and uh, I actually own a Sprinter 2500 4x4, so what do I need one to review? Well, mine is fully kitted out with all of the RV stuff from Winnebago, and all I really wanted to do was drag race this against my van and see how much slower mine is from carrying around all the weight. But take a look at the spec. It's got the stitching on the doors, really nice, the power seats, but then it has the non-leather wheel, the small screen here. And of course it's a full cargo version. So take a look in the back. It, this will be kind of cool. It's gonna be like a race van compared to mine because it's got, you know, thousands of pounds lighter. All of this is just wide open, baby. So this will be really fun to experience and play around with for a little bit. I don't think we're gonna do too, too much with it, but a couple videos here or there. And uh, yeah, just a cool, you know, sort of nifty thing to be able to review. So looking forward to spending some time. But what we're gonna do now is we're gonna jump in the Sprinter, head over to Drew's Warehouse, Martian Wheels, to pick up two wheels and tires, for the Model S Plaid. And then we're gonna go up to Colton's shop, drop them off so they can get coated, and then eventually they'll make their way over to the Tesla Service Center to get mounted onto the car. Heading out in the Sprinter now, and I can't, for the life of me, figure out what that button does, the bacon strips in the fan. I have no idea. But look, it's got the base gauges, and like the steering is so light compared to my Sprinter. It feels so different. This is the same spec, 2500, Oh, this is only a two-wheel drive, not a four-wheel drive. But um, everything feels so much lighter and easier. The engine feels so much happier to move. <laughs> and that makes sense because, yeah, I mean, it's just got to be like a thousand pounds lighter than my rig. I can't even see an engine temperature location here. Perhaps on the main screen, if I can find the info, then I should. Yeah, here we go. Oil temp's still cold, so we'll be a little bit easy on it until uh, it comes up to temperature but it's got the base wheel, which I kind of don't mind. I'm just really loving this thing. I'm, I love vans, but this drives, wow, and it gets off the line so much better. And I'm just gently hitting the throttle. It's like a race van. This would be mine at full power. Weight makes a big difference, no question. Well, off we go then to Drew's. It's only about a three mile drive. So let's head on over there. I'm gonna stop in at the EA station, of course, and update you on the progress. And uh, yeah, can't wait to get my phone. I hope they actually put it to the side like they said they'll go, they're will go. Uh, they going to, we'll see. Full racing mode, full send. Oh, this thing buggies all the way out. Oh my God, it's so fast. <laughs> no wonder why I guess the sprinters drive amazing. Wow, mine drives like total crap in comparison to this. I really don't like the way my sprinter drives and this thing freaking shreds. Okay, I'm gonna make a comparison of like, here's what doing an RV conversion will do to the drivability of your Sprinter because this thing, foot down, still has all the lag. Ah, <laughs> burning rubber, baby! Watch out, driving like a van on a mission. Gotta run errands. <laughs> this is great! Wow! I wanna rip all the stuff out of mine now. Make a racing van. Oh, nice Beetle. Cool. Let's keep rocking. And here we are arriving to the Martian Wheels Warehouse, which I know the code to, thankfully, because I've only been here once or twice before, but I will not share that code with you. Let's get right up to the machine. Man, this Sprinter is wonderful. All right, not gonna show you the code. There we go. 
This thing drives so freaking great. I wonder if it has electric power steering. Mine definitely doesn't, but this has, the steering is so different. I'm just trying to see if the revs drop, dry steering it, and I don't really know. So here we go, let's pull in. I'll back it in full man with a van style, doing van work here. Turning radius, I bet. I think it's electric steering and ours is power. Oh, there's Drew working on, working on his motorcycle. So let's back this sucker on up. Put this thing in wide view. So we'll back it on up to the uh, gate. And there's Ruby. Hey, Ruby. Ruby's the best, one of the best dogs on the planet. Just an insanely smart animal. Backing it up, backing it up. It also is fancy. It's got the electric parking brake on. Into neutral, let it sit on the parking brake and then hit park here. Great. What do details do? Uh, I don't know, battery voltage. Huh, interesting. All right, let's go say hey to Drew. Hey, Ruby. How are you, boy? Ruby's got a girl's name, but he's a boy dog. Explain that one to me. So, a new garage over here? Uh, yeah, we got several storage units. Oh, nice. What you doing? I'm just doing some motorcycle work. Looks good. Looks like you've been riding it. Doing some zen. Yeah, absolutely. What do you think of the bright green Sprinter? Um, yeah, a bright green? Well, it's kind of it's kind of teal. teal. Not a good color. It's uh, yeah, it's a Sprinter. It's so much faster than mine with all the weight out of it. That's why I sure. got it. Yeah. I said, Mercedes, hey, I want to drag race our loaded one. Yeah. And they were like, yeah, take take this one. Right, yeah. <laughs> and it's it's really, it feels like a race car. Exactly, yeah. Well, it's got to weigh half as much as yours, right? Yeah, I yeah. think something like that. But man, I was zipping through traffic getting over here. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> and damn. You got any more we could fit in here? Yeah. Two, two, <laughs> we got we do, room. We do have more. <laughs> So that's a uh, good thing we got the big sprinter for this. <laughs> right. Thank God. <laughs> Great to see Drew as always and Ruby, but just a quick hello and goodbye. Had to pick up these wheels and we are heading off back up north to the Loveland area. I need to decide if we're going to swing by Colton's first and, or, and then the iPhone situation. Basically, I just wasn't home earlier and I have to go to the UPS warehouse. Let's just zoom on out here. Um, yeah, so have to go to the UPS warehouse and not sure if I should do that before or after. I guess it depends on traffic. So off we go then in the racing sprinter. Truly amazing how good this thing is. And I'm so thrilled to have some fresh Martian wheels to go back on my Model S. I think what I'll do is I'll put the fresh ones on the back and we'll put the two ones from the right side on the front because it's a square setup. And that way, yeah, we kind of even out the tire wear a little bit. 25 north, that's us. We have the yield. Let's not die today. All right, getting ready to unleash the beast on the highway. Let's see what this thing can do. We're all up to temperature. Everything's looking good. And we got a Subaru coming in real hot. That's about to hit this bicyclist. Oh boy. All right, here we go, wide open throttle. Big lag and wheel spin, wow. Still pinned, look at this thing. Revving all the way out. Nice torque, 55, 60, on the brakes. <laughs> Racing sprinter, blind spots going crazy for no reason. All right, off we then go, off we go then. What am I trying to say? Gotta cruise up north. So we're having pretty good luck with traffic so far, though I don't want to speak too soon, but I think we're going to head to Colton's shop first and drop off the wheels. I also just got a call from, uh, or call, a message in my app, because you can't call these people, from Tesla service saying my Model 3 is done. I was originally promised same day service, and then it moved into the next day, and now it's at the end of the day after that. So I guess no big complaints, the car is done. I don't really need it, but it'll be ready for Dominic. Jordan is going to go up to the house tomorrow because I'm actually leaving to go to Washington in the Rivian to pick up my new Leaf that I bought in the previous episode. I'm gonna road trip up there and trailer the Leaf back. And uh, Jordan's gonna swap on the 19 inch Martian wheels. And so that'll be pretty sweet. So, yep, I say uh, 
off to Colton's at the moment, then I'll go get the iPhone, then I'll run home, Alyssa and I will go pick up the Model 3, and that sounds like a pretty good plan to me. Haha, <laughs> it should be wild. Full New York driving mode engaged. We're going for the full zipper, folks. Going for the full zipper. We are wide open throttle. <laughs> and I think we're getting pretty close to where we need to start thinking about the merge point. Yeah, where do you guys think we should zip on in? I'm thinking somewhere right about here. Seems pretty good to me. Uh, yep, not my van. I'm just going to squeeze my way in. Well, that saved us about 10 minutes. Comment below if you think that was a D move or if that was proper usage of every available bit of roadway, which is what you're supposed to do. Zipper, pull all the way to the end and then zoom in. But uh, yeah, that's that's uh, grew up in New York and that's where it shows. I'm very respectful though. Use my turn signal. Come on. Look at the views over here into the distance. That is just so dreamy. This is why we live in Colorado for that mountain view. Wow. Just amazing. Gorgeous. And we are looking down over at clear detailing. Look at how huge the shadow is on this thing. In those green buildings over there is the home of out of spec detailing. So, wow, the colors are so dramatic right now with the sun at this low angle, also known as golden hour. For those who know, everyone knows golden hour. It's nothing, not a special term. Ooh, Wagoneer. So, uh, yeah, all right, let's go see Colton. Wow, that sky is just insane, isn't it? Look at it, it's so dark overhead. And then just, opens up the sun in spurts. Pretty dramatic, pretty crazy. And here we are. This is out of spec detailing, clear detailing. Wow, he's got some stuff in here. Buffing on the RS Q8, it looks like. Threw it in park, I think. Yes, okay, good. Off we go then. All righty. Hey, how are ya? He's got the doggos here too, which is great. Maybe I should have backed it, but these wheels aren't too heavy. Oh yeah, no shipping damage. Good thing we got the big sprinter door opened. Alrighty, well, I'm gonna get these unloaded and in the shop. And here we are, Martian wheels, baby. Looking good. So what's your plan with these things? So I think we're gonna coat these basically exactly how we did it the first time with the you know same wheels but um we're gonna use g technic c5 and i'm thinking about doing a little trial i haven't even talked to you about this okay um i want to do a top coat on it too just try it because we'll have one side be just g technic c5 and then the other side have base coat top coat and maybe see how they work yeah that'll that. be good okay experiment let's do it so i think i'm going to put these on the rear and then put the two that are on the right side on the front. Fair enough. So we can still we'll see do front wheels. rear. Yeah. Yep. And um, okay, that'll be kind of cool. So yeah. is that an extra step that you have to do then? Yeah, it is. So we'll do a full base coat on it, let it cure for between four to six hours, maybe even overnight, and then come back and put XOV4 over the top of it. Cool. Um, that's the same coating that I use on the paint, but it's matte and satin safe, which is super nice. Hmm. Very cool. So. You'll have a whole detailing video on that oh, yeah. going up on out of spec detailing. So we'll say goodbye to these things. And then I got to jump back in the Sprinter because it's iPhone collection day. You know what happened? Uh, they didn't drop it off at the house because I wasn't there. So I was like, hey, you better hold that thing because I'm going to Washington tomorrow. So I won't be back for like five days. So I'm like, I, I'm going to I'm going to the office and not even like the customer office, like the behind the scenes office to get it. They were super cool. So back in the Sprinter we go. What the heck is going on in here? Oh, just all kinds of work as always. So what's up with this one? So this is kind of on pause as we're working on the RSQ8 in here. So this is getting kind of full paint correction, doing another ceramic coating on this. Kind of an interesting job working on an older vehicle. Yeah, but in here- Does it even have a clear coat? It does actually. So it's been repainted. It's been repainted. Funny enough, um, I did some paint measurements. It was like 60 or 70 mils in some Oh my like, God. Okay, there's some serious body work. Yeah. Right here. Okay. This um, thing looks good. 
Yes, so this we're in the process right now of doing the second step of the actual paint correction. So we're doing paint polishing, just making all the last details, turning the gloss up to 11 and just making it look proper. Cool, well, can't wait to see this thing <laughs> out in the day. Are you doing an episode on this as well? Yeah, absolutely. So this will actually be a three part series on this one, which I'm pretty excited about um, talking about you know, basically a brand new car. What are the steps similar to yours, but- But uh, more in depth. Yeah, yeah, a little bit more in depth and going kind of on the German side of, I've worked on so many Audis that it's like crazy at this point. So this is cool to um, kind of come back and do some of those and actually put it on tape. So that's cool. Nice, cool. Well, it uh, certainly is a great spec. Yep. That interior, yeah. holy Look smokes. The interior of this. Do you think the owner would care if I show the interior? No, not at all. Dang, look at this thing. So I recently reviewed an RS6 Avant with this interior, yeah, and it's cool. the business. It is. <laughs> so good. All the Balkan I like the spec too because it's most of the RS2 8s that I've seen actually have had carbon optics, whereas this one just has black optics. I like the accents of the wood, especially inside with the cognac interior. I think it works pretty nice. Sick, and this is full spicy mode too. Yeah. Wow, crazy. And the monster wheels, the 23 inch wheels. Uh, yeah. Does it have ceramics? Can you even option ceramics on an RSQ8? I don't know, but those are the crazy front brakes. These are the steel brakes then, yep. With the huge, huge color. I mean, that's like, it's like an Urus basically. Baby Urus. So sick. Well, can't wait to see the detailing series on this then. This, this will look great. Yes, absolutely. Up, up. Come on, let's go. Charlie, up, up, please. Yeah, oh, big brakes. <laughs> Scary sprinter. Scary sprinter. I was planning on stealing your dogs. <laughs> All right, a little bit of a drizzle happening here, and we only have 15 miles to get over to the UPS Center because the iPhone 14 is hopefully waiting there. Always stop here because sometimes trains come and you do not want to get split in half by a train. So, wide open throttle. Ripping it. That's how you got to drive vans. Wide open throttle or nothing, baby. It's a press car. Got to treat it like that. I'm joking. Don't, I hate, I'm never unnecessarily harsh on press cars, I promise. Ooh, full brakes in that thing. What the heck was that all about? That is one hell of a sky. Pretty dramatic. Doesn't really get much better than that, does it? It's totally insane here. So the way that I found out about getting to this UPS place was um, basically I flagged down a UPS truck that I saw near my neighborhood thinking he's the one who left me this notice and he wasn't, but he called the like warehouse place, which is this right here and basically made a special arrangement for the driver to leave my package at the front desk. These people really are great, but take a look at all the freaking trucks they have. This should all be electric in my opinion, um, but man, packages everywhere, trucks everywhere. This is really freaking cool. So I have some instructions. Those are the doors I'm gonna go in right there and I know where to go. So let's run in, we'll let this truck come on down and See if we can get ourselves our package. Well, that took two seconds, got my package, iPhone, here we go. I parked up front, so let's jump in the Sprinter and I don't know, I wanna go check on the EA station. Maybe after I pick up the Model 3, I'll put some miles on it. We'll go check out the EA station later, but I wanna get this phone set up, so let's head home. And welcome home. We are now a two sprinter driveway, although this one's got base headlights, which should be illegal. Um, but yeah, you can see, whoa, there's our Winnebago Revel. So we got to do a little comparison, sprinter on sprinter. Um, our e-tron is charged up to 25 or 30 percent. I may leave this on a level one because we have to prepare to be gone for the next four or five days going up to Washington in the Rivian, Rivian sitting at about 68, 69% state of charge. Again, no level two home charging at the moment since it exploded. Diesel, baby. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna unbox this iPhone and then we're gonna collect the Model 3 performance from the Tesla service center. They left the key card in it. I'll access it from the app, paid for everything in the app. I'm gonna run through everything they did with it. Uh, and the costs and all that good stuff. And then we'll check on the EA station progress as usual. Oh my gosh, what are you doing, Blue? Why are you wearing that, buddy? 
Hi, Ellie. Are you happy? Or what? Why is he wearing that, Alyssa? It's your robe? That's nice. What are you eating? Hi, Ellie. Hi, sweet girl. Well, I've just transferred everything. This is the old phone. This is the new phone. From the back, they look pretty much the same. Always go for the white iPhones to help with thermal longevity uh, when filming out in the sun. You can see this case is yellowed over time, but this is really a nice color, this silver color. Um, let's see, I always set up my iPhones each as new phones, and I keep the old ones for live streams and other angles when filming. So this will stick around. And uh, for secondary angles, let's see. I don't want to transfer apps and data. I'll set it up as a fresh phone. I just did the face ID scans. Let's see, make this your new iPhone. And this is officially the first video shot on iPhone 14. There's Blue eating his, what is that thing, Alyssa? It's a bone. It's a bone. And here's Ellie just chilling out. Always gotta have the dogs as the first video. Sort of uh, the most important bit of iPhone day. I'm a bit of an Apple nerd. I'm like, like most people are into Teslas is how I'm into uh, Apple. It's just mm -hmm. like, I'll just buy anything they make. Yeah, you, you do. Yeah, but I'm not like a real tech nerd, so I just go with them. You just trust it. I just go with it. I just, you happy buddy in your blue robe? <laughs> he's a dinosaur. Oh, he's a dinosaur, I see. Ellie, why don't you have a robe? She don't go to swimming. She didn't go swimming today, I see. So what's the plan, Alyssa? We're going to get dinner, picking up the Model 3, and I think we're gonna to choose to eat near uh, the Porsche Audi dealer right down the street because they have made their fast charger available to us with a secret code. It's not a public charger. Secret. Secret code. No, we won't give it to you if you ask, but the e-tron e needs some juice in it. So we'll charge it up to 70 or 80%, and that'll be good for it to do the trip to Loveland and back. Might have just enough range to make it at 70%. It's so thirsty. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> yeah, but I think we'll, it'll end up sitting at around 50% state of charge while we're gone, which is perfect for it. Perfect. And just out for a cruise in the e-tron. Take a look at this. You want to know this little trick, Alyssa? If you just pinch your fingers here, then they sink to the driver. No way. Yeah, did you know that? Yes. You did? Yeah. That you can... This is my car after all. Yeah, nice. Let's put on the poor weather light big wide light area up front and I've set my profile to have a very classy white light where yours is purple and pink and all these crazy colors. Mine's just purple. I don't like But pink. look, it comes down white all the way through here. The seatbelt buckles. Seatbelt buckles are always white. Seatbelt buckles are always white, yes. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, cool. Let's go plug this thing in at the uh, DC fast charger and we'll charge it up. Let's set the charging limit to charging and efficiency charging wow you have it set to 100 percent. let's set it to 70 percent. i don't think we'll need any more than that and it'd be good for this thing to sit between 50 and 70 percent state of charge while we're gone so we're at 25 percent state of charge right now predicting 51 miles which is pretty good so 200 miles on a charge where do you see 25 percent? right here where right there where it's 22 actually you don't know this little bar right here no you didn't know that's how you know your what percent you're at? I mean, but how do you know exactly that it's at 22? Well, because this says 22. Ow. <laughs> but this looks like 25 to me. Yeah. All right, let's not get the red light ticket. Oh, by the way, I think we did get a red light ticket. Was it me? I don't know, but it can't, you know, I get this notification of what's coming in the mail. Oh. They like scan our stuff before it arrives. I guess I have a parking ticket. <laughs> well, that's because the, the dang things don't work downtown. <laughs> the dang things don't work downtown. So I could contest it or I could just pay Wonder the $25. Where you're from. <laughs> Are you from the South? It's not South, it's South. South? With yeah. an F? Yeah, South. Why? It's South. South? <laughs> I'm not that Southern. Sometimes I am. What side is your charging port on? The left side? Your so side. We'll back it into the spot. Wait, you've never charged this car before? Not at this charger. Oh. Yeah. You better go. Okay, we're going. Hold on tight. Full beams. Oh, gosh. Ahead. Oh, gosh. Everybody just hold on tight. We're full sending this thing. Hard brakes. And, and there goes everything. What's going on back there? Can I go the other way? Will that turn it off? No. 
Is it going to blow up in here? We'll just no, have a big canoe. It's just an air air thing for my paddle boards. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> okay. Well, sounds like it's struggling a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We'll back it into the charger. Get this thing charging and walk to dinner. And we'll turn that off. So now that you've just about ruined everything that's in the trunk of my car. Well, don't put stuff in your car. Every time I drive this, stuff's flying around. That guy was sending it. Yeah. That was awesome. There's stuff in the back because you haven't installed my roof racks that are waiting to be installed. And they're still in the back. Yeah. So. Let's just make sure this thing charges. Yeah. There we go. 22%, we'll charge it up to 70. 46 kilowatts, good for the battery. We don't need fast, fast charging. And we'll go have dinner across the street. The food, the Indian devoured it. Good. good. Great dinner at the Indian place. And uh, the e-tron just completed as we were walking into the parking lot. Alyssa got the notification on her watch that the Audi had just completed at 70% state of charge. So. Pretty good timing. We're gonna unplug. Alyssa, you're gonna drive. Yeah, because I gotta finish setting up this phone. And uh, yeah, you just unplug it from the car now. As long as it's unlocked, it should just go. It's not unlocked, you have the keys. I have the keys? Oh. You better have the keys. I do. There you go. And then hit the little button and... There we go. <laughs> See what I was saying about all your crazy colors in here? Yeah. All right. Well, this off to Tesla Loveland. It's only about 10 minutes down the road. Give and or take. Give or take. Depends on the traffic, but it's pretty pretty empty right now. It's 9 p.m. It doesn't feel that late. It does to me. I'm tired. Yeah, we got to get up early and hit the road to Washington. We got an out-of-spec motoring road trip video to film Woo to pick up our leaf. Hell yeah. Are you excited so about no the leaf? One ever. <laughs> Are you excited about the leaf? Nope. It's gonna freaking clog up my driveway even more than it already is. Yeah, we really need to get a warehouse as soon as possible. It's gotta hold a lot ASAP of cars. ASAP as soon as possible. ASAP as possible. Yeah, that's what she said. Yeah, that's the Michael Scott quote from the office. Uh, oh, look at this. Right it's a Tessita. Mm -hmm. That's their license plate. Wow. Yeah. I love Tesla owners. They're really, truly the best people out there. <laughs> <laughs> we do love Tesla owners. What are you talking about? I don't want another Tesla. Really? Yeah, these cars are great. You're going to have to live with it because I, I still love Tesla. <laughs> it's just they haven't revamped anything set. I mean, they're just so the same. Yeah. Cookie cutter. Okay. Well, this is like literally a combustion car with a battery in it. You're dang right it is. <laughs> and it's comfortable and it's giving me a massage right now. And it hugs me every single time I get into the car. Teslas don't do that. That's right. They don't. So, I'll stick with my German. You can stay with your America. America. Mm-hmm. Well, dang, we've been coming here a lot, Alyssa. A lot, a lot. Yeah, and we still have the Model S here. We still have the Model S here, but not for much longer. Yeah, there's Beak. Yeah, there's Beak Beak. Yep, okay. Wow, the low light performance. You better hit it. No. You lost your opportunity. I don't have you a snooze, you lose. good depth perception at night, so I, I really waited out. Yeah, so we'll be here. I'll just plan a nap. <laughs> <laughs> you might want to. Yeah. Because my new glasses haven't come in yet. And I think maybe you're okay. Oh, I don't know, Alyssa. Better be quick. <laughs> funny. <laughs> so funny. All right. Let's see what we got here. A broken window on that Model Y over there. That doesn't Probably look... went to Denver. Yeah, Denver's sketchy these days. This Model X has failed air suspension. You can see it's crouched down. If you go left, Beaks over there. Wanted to go the proper entrance. Oh, that's very nice. They charged it up to 90%, a bit high. Oh, look at that signature Model S. Well, uh, also failed air suspension. It needs to be charged that high. What does? The beak. Why? Because it's going on a road trip. Going on a road trip, leaving on Monday, though. 
Yeah, but how else? We're not going to be able to charge it. We're not going to be he, here. It's Dominic's problem. He's got supercharger access, and it's free. Well, yeah, but, you know, know. It's not good for the battery to be up that high. Oh, uh, okay. Well, that battery is, you know, it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. I agree. All right. Well, I'm actually going to take it and run over to the um, Electrify America station to check on their progress. So I'll see you at home later. All right. Oh, okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right. Well, here it is. We got the Model 3 with a brand new windshield on it. Take a look at that. That looks freaking awesome. No more crack. I did not replace the roof glass. I just didn't think it was bad enough. I didn't even ask them for a quote. I'm not sure what it would cost. They also fixed the radiator fan issue up front. And um, yeah, so charged up to 90%. I just put a new software update on it. And yeah, I guess I'll walk you through everything they did to it and the total cost here in, uh, yeah, right now. Let's do it. So the total bill for Beak was about $1,800. They wanted $1,000 to fix the windshield and about $800 to fix the noise. What had happened is they said something underneath had scraped the shield and dented the shroud for the fan. Um, wow, everyone decides to go by now. And um, now it should be working perfectly fine. What's up, Alyssa? Uh, you took my key. I took your key? There you go. See ya. Bye. All right. Well, actually, hold on a second because I don't know if I can even get into this thing. I have my old phone that I think works with the phone key situation still. The answer is yes. No, maybe. Uh, oh, actually, I don't know. It might still be software updating. It won't let me in. Yeah, the Model 3 won't let me in. It's still software updating. It's only at 60%. So, um, okay, guess we got to wait it out for it to finish its software update. Well, let's unplug this thing. I got it opened up using my old phone with the Bluetooth connection. They have these things almost perfectly high enough where the cable just about doesn't touch. Man, that old... Model S signature looks freaking awesome, except for the failed air suspension, but black interior. If you ever see these things with cream interior, that's pretty sweet. Um, all right, Alyssa, I'll see you later. I'm just going to wait for this to finish updating. All right, bye-bye. And uh, we had some issues with this car. We thought um, basically not charging on level two, but it turns out that it's a non-issue. Wow, take a look at this. Nice, fresh, new windshield pretty dirty for being fresh wouldn't you say but uh yeah software updating do not drive until complete well after only a couple minutes we're on everything is updated tesla profile stuff blind spot camera stuff okay hmm that's kind of cool disable sentry sounds that's good for the dogs just in case and all right well that's all good all right, well, let's head to the Electrify America station, which is just down over here. So we're going to go to E-L-E-C-T-R-I-F-Y. 3.6 miles. We'll swing by on the way home. Into drive. Wow, finally get to use this thing now. I haven't driven it in months, so see how it feels should be good jordan's gonna swap on the martian wheels before dominic ta dominic takes it on his big road trip so um yeah this thing's ready to rock and roll i would say awesome and here we are it looks like everyone's gone home for the night which is good and uh yeah just let's take a look as to see what's going on the same forklift is over here and interesting it looks like they actually did rip out our chatamo station so oh no it's there never mind it was hiding so we have the abb cabinet cabinets here it doesn't look like much progress was made i don't see the new ones in there yet through the cracks maybe they're there hmm, i would have thought they would have been farther along by now but actually no take a look they've run all the cabling up this way here and so I won't have updates for the next few days. Hopefully by the time we're back, this is fully online because we're taking a trip up. Um, yeah, very interesting situation. This was the other spot that they had looking like we could have put a charger in. Or is that that? Are they adding another one? Hold on, we got to count really quick. Let's take a look. I want to know if they're adding any. So one, 
two, three, four, this would have been five. So, yep, just like four. Same number as before, just getting upgraded ones. So that's these units here, and yeah, no, no progress really to report other than behind the scenes stuff has been going on. You can see the wet concrete. So they've definitely done some cabling work. Anyway, Model 3 is driving great. Really have to say, this thing's feeling awesome. There are some suspension clunks over on the right side. So um, not loving that, but that's okay. We have all new suspension to go on this thing. It just won't be on before Dom takes the car. Sounds like he's going to fly in on Monday and take this thing for, I don't know, a month or two, however long he needs it for. And then as soon as it's back, I can't wait to get all the suspension on this. We need to do that. Um, hopefully he buys his bolt so we can get this thing back and put all that, <laughs> put all that mountain pass performance stuff on this and get it in full winter rally mode. It's going to be awesome.